Hi guys, I hope everyone's been having a fantastic day so far. It's been a couple of months since I did the Gaja Wino mod for the Gaja Classic Pro. Before I proceed with upgrading to the STM32 Black Pill chip, which I know a lot of people are waiting for, I wanted to give a quick update on my experience so far. Kind of like a review if you will. There have been a lot of mods released for the original Gaja Classic and the new Gaja Classic Pro. Prior to my current machine, the RI9380, I've actually been using an RI9480, which I've upgraded through the years with standalone mods. The ones I've installed are a PID temperature control kit, a brew dimmer switch, a 9 bar OPV spring, a pressure gauge, shades of coffee, stop box enclosure, and a few other small upgrades like a brass group head, a silicone gasket, and an IMS shower screen as well. All of the mods above are relatively straightforward to install because they all act independently of each other. The Gajuino, on the other hand, introduces some level of complexity because aside from the various components that measure and control the machine's functionality, you will also need to connect them to a microcontroller running open source software. That then leads us to the question, is the Gajuino mod worth all the time and effort it takes to install? Well, let's find out. There are a lot of videos that talk about the various mods available to the Gaja Classic. For stabilizing your temperature, there are PID kits available from either AliExpress or Shades of Coffee. For controlling pressure, you can choose from either a 9-bar OPV spring upgrade or maybe even a dimmer switch that will allow you to control the pump's power. For reading information, you can install pressure gauges or as I mentioned earlier, a PID kit to display the boiler's temperature. In my opinion, these mods only bring the Gaja Classic to the same level as other basic machines of the modern era. The key factor here is the cost. You get more functionality for what you initially paid for. Doing these mods will give you a truly capable machine, no doubt about that, but it doesn't really bring anything new to the table. If you watched my build log, you'll notice that I used components that are not that different from the mods I talked about earlier. For reading and controlling temperature, I used an SSR relay and a temperature sensor similar to what's included in a PID kit. For controlling pressure, I used a dimmer switch very much like what other businesses use in their pressure control kits. The only vastly different piece is the transducer, which is jammed between the pump and the group head. Traditional machines use some sort of gauge to show the machine's pressure. Some even have two gauges. One shows pressure after the overpressure valve or OPV, and the other shows the reading at the group head. Anyway, the point I'm trying to make is, the components surrounding the Gajuino isn't what makes it special, it's actually the software. Just think of it as like a brain. You can upgrade individual parts of a machine to work better on its own, but it won't be as efficient versus if it worked as a single unit. Having a component that manages all the other pieces not only adds incremental improvements to our beloved machine, but in my opinion, changes the espresso game altogether. One example that comes to mind of how useful this is, is something I'm just going to call reactive pressure control. To describe it, let's not talk about pre-infusion or pressure profiling. Let's just assume that all we want to do is to extract espresso at a constant pressure value. With standard machines, this is usually regulated at 9 bars. This is then adjusted by either changing the spring on the overpressure valve or moving a paddle like on the GS3 or the Slayer to alter it at the group head. With the Gaju Wino, it's quite different. When I turn on the brew switch, the software fetches the current pressure reading. Well, I haven't changed the OPV spring, so in the case of my machine, it should read 14 bars of pressure. Since we have the software configured to extract at 9 bars, it will actually lower the pump's power through pulse skip modulation or PSM until it gets a reading of 9 bars of pressure from the transducer. So what's so cool about that? Well, imagine this example. When extracting from a densely filled pot, instead of relying on a valve to harshly divert excess water, the system just pulses the pump ever so slightly to match the amount of pressure coming out of the pot, resulting in what appears to be a more gentler flow of water. In theory, this should provide us with a more evenly saturated pot, less channeling, and a more efficient extraction. But anyway, this is not a scientific experiment. I am merely recording my observations, and in my opinion, extracting espresso on this machine 
feels more forgiving. The important thing to note here is that this type of innovation hasn't been seen for quite some time. How many companies are building espresso machines enhanced by a microcontroller? Not only does this technology open up a new realm of flavor profiling, but the data recording aspect alone should prove invaluable in providing baristas the data they need to make even better coffee. All right, now let's talk about something that I haven't seen anywhere before, and that's what it's like to actually use the machine. Everything is managed via the small LCD screen we installed on the last video. This acts as the command center for all the machine's functions. In idle state, you will be able to see the current values our sensors are reading on the screen, as well as pre-infusion and pressure profiling settings if you have that set up. The only thing being managed at this point is the temperature. The software turns the boiler on and off to attempt to stabilize the machine at the desired temperature. Going to the settings screen, you'll be able to configure the bars at which the pre-infusion runs at, how long it runs for, and if you want to pause to help completely saturate the pump. On the pressure profiling section, you can gently taper off pressure to simulate lever machines by entering the desired end pressure and duration. Configuring the machine's temperature is also as easy as navigating to the temperature settings on the menu and just adjusting the values using the touchscreen. When we're ready to pull our shot, we press the middle switch which activates the brew state. The machine goes through the following sequence. Pre-infusion, pressure hold, then finishes off with pressure profiling. The machine will turn on the pump, read the pressure, and either increase or decrease the pulses to match the configured value. The software just does this on a loop, moving on to the next phase of the routine as time goes by. All values are then displayed on a beautiful graph, which enables home baristas to gather information so they can make data-driven decisions for their next cup of coffee. If you want full control, and want to extract espresso manually, you can bypass all the settings by going to the manual extraction screen. When you're at this mode, you'll be able to select which pressure to run the extraction at. And when you turn on the brew switch, the machine will ignore all previously configured settings and just extract espresso at the desired pressure. A couple of other modes are the flush mode, where the machine will run at a constant 9 bars of pressure, and a descale mode for when you want to clean and do some maintenance on your machine. The last part of the menu goes over machine-specific configuration, which I did not need to change. Your mileage may vary, so visit the Discord to make sure everything is configured correctly for your setup. Aside from upgrading the core experience of the Gacha Classic Pro, like adding in temperature control and even pressure control, the real value of the Gajuino comes from the software. Being able to control and automate several key components unlocks so many new features that not only upgrades the machine, but transforms it altogether. With a build cost of around $500, you get pre-infusion, pressure profiling, reactive pressure control, a graph view for gathering data, utility options like flush and descale. I mean, the list just goes on and on. The crazy thing is, if that feature set sounds like something you would want, then as far as I know, your only other option is the legendary Decent DE1, which is made for commercial use and costs more than three grand. If you know of any other machine with the same features, please leave a comment down below. I can look it up and include them on my next video. Let's go back to the question I brought up at the first part of the video. Do the benefits outweigh the cost and effort needed to do the mod? Well, in my opinion, absolutely. Having used the Gajuino for a few months now, the best way I can describe having a machine like this is Number one, I'm no longer bothered by all the rituals needed to operate a bare manual espresso machine thanks to temperature and pressure stabilization. Two, I can now be more adventurous with the beans I use due to the machine's more forgiving characteristic thanks to reactive pressure control. Three, I can now augment my brew cycle with pre-infusion and pressure profiling to aid in increasing puck saturation and just general extraction efficiency. And number four, I can become better at making coffee and make data-driven tweaks thanks to the graph that summarizes what happened after each extraction. So that's it. Thanks for watching and I'll see you all on the next one.